Okay, here we've got this envelope, says shoulder and paper, uh, elbow and paper activity. So I'm gonna dump out and you're gonna see inside this envelope, I just have a bunch of pictures and there's some pictures of muscles as you can see and let's see what else do I have in here. Okay, let me set this out. Okay, yeah, so there's a picture of a muscle and uh, there's some picture of some action and then there's a picture of a nerve and so if I set these things out, let's put these things in some type of semblance and order basically sorted everything out so i've got nerves over here and pictures of actions and then muscles pictures of muscles here and the nerves and so because i only have a certain limited space i'm just going to do some of them together so let me take a look at these so i've got the following nerves here um i've got dorsal scapular the upper and lower subscapular axillary muscular cutaneous long thoracic radial and suprascapular nerve so let's do dorsal scapular nerve because it comes off of c5 and then let's do long thoracic nerve as well because that's going to come off of c5 c6 and c7 and let's do suprascapular nerve as well because that's coming off the superior trunk c5 c6 and then maybe let's do muscular cutaneous nerve as well because that is um, coming. That's um, one of the big ones off the anterior division. And let's take these three and let's put them to the side for just a moment. Okay, how about that? So let's put them over here. So <clears throat> let's take a look at these pictures here and see if we can't determine which is which. So like right on top, there's our long thoracic nerve, and I think it's long thoracic nerve because there's C5, C6 and C7, and we can see the roots coming all the way down. So that's our long thoracic nerve. So that's going to go right here. And then this next one, there's our golden arches. There's the M, so there's the muscular cutaneous nerve that's right there. Um, and then this one, there's C5, there's C6, and they come together. And so it's before the junction, so that's our dorsal scapular nerve. That's our accessory phrenic nerve. I don't care if you know that. So there is our dorsal scapular nerve. So I'm going to set that one right there. Um, yes, and then that's radial. And there's our subscap. Uh, let's see here. Um, those are our subscapular nerves. There we go. There's our suprascapular nerve because there's C5 and C6 come together to make the superior trunk. And there's the suprascapular nerve. That's um, our sub nerve to the subclavius. I don't care if you know that either, but that's nerve, suprascapular nerve. So that's gonna go there. So let's take these and put them aside for just a moment. And now let's take a look at muscles, shall we? Let's take a look at these muscles and <clears throat> figure some of the stuff out. So here we've got this green muscle. There's the spine of the scapula in green. So that's our supraspinatus muscle. That is innervated by our suprascapular nerve. I'm gonna set that one right there, okay? And then there in orange, we can see our trapezius muscle. The trapezius muscle is over there. And so there is our big rhombus looking muscle in orange, there's our rhomboid major. That's innervated by our dorsal scapular nerve. Here we've got a green muscle, that's triceps, so that doesn't deal with this one at all. Here we've got is a teres minor. Well, it's not innervated by any of these. Here we've got an infraspinatus. We know it's infraspinatus because there's a spine of the scapula, so there's the infraspinatus muscle. That's also innervated by our suprascapular nerve. I'll set that right there. Okay, so here we've got a two-headed muscle, and I know it's two-headed because there's the long head going through the infra intertubercular groove, and then there's the short head coming from the coracoid, and they both insert on the radial tuberosity. That is our biceps, which is innervated by our muscular cutaneous nerve, shing, right there. Now, how about this in blue? That's on the front, so that's subscapularis. That's none of these. Um, how about this? Oh, there is a nice one. That's the deltoid, and we can tell that's the deltoid because it makes this delta shape. Um, from the front and the side. So that's the deltoid, That's, but that's not innervated by any of these. That's gonna be our axillary nerve. Um, ah, here's one that's got a serrated edge on the front and it attaches to the medial margin of the scapula. That's our serratus anterior and that's innervated by our long thoracic nerve, okay? 
Uh, Terry's Minor, we already talked about. That's not there. Oh, look at this one. This is um, one that arising from the front of the humerus. So that's our brachialis, and it inserts on the ulna. That is going to be over here. Shing! On that. So let me just set those over there for a second. And I think we basically covered all those muscles. So let's take, and I'm going to switch these out. So I'm going to put this over here. So now I've got these other muscles. So this picture here shows those scapulae protracting. Okay, so they're pushing towards the front. So that is going to be what the serratus anterior muscle does, which is protraction of the scapula, also known as abduction. And now in this picture between A and B, we can see that the humerus externally rotates uh, or lateral rotation, external rotation. And that is an action for the infraspinatus muscle, which is innervated by our suprascapular nerve, which comes off the superior trunk in the house that Jack built. All right, now we take a look at this one and we can see those scapulae are, bringing to, are coming together. That's retraction of the scapula. That's gonna be our deltoid, Shing, right there. So here we've got, what the what? I've got two of these pictures. So there's gotta be another muscle that'll do external rotation. Let me shuffle that to the back and come back to it. Now let's look at this one. You can see that the humerus is abduction just a little bit, like that first 15 degrees. And you're like, which one does that? That's right. That is our supraspinatus muscle right there. The supraspinatus, when it contracts, it then abducts that humerus, that first 15 degrees, supraspinatus. So the suprascapular nerve innervates both supraspinatus and infraspinatus and is therefore responsible for abduction, initial abduction of the glenohumeral joint and external rotation. Now what about this picture here? The hand is facing down and now the hand is facing up. Remember that? Hold the soup, prone to spill the soup, but you're holding the soup like this. So when you go from that position to the soup position, that supination, and that, my friends, is the biceps. That's the big action, one of the big actions of the biceps is supination. And now what is this? Now this is showing something odd, not odd, but it's not an action, but I just see a bunch of skin in yellow on the lateral part of the forearm. That's the cutaneous part of the musculocutaneous nerve. It has becomes the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. So that's the cutaneous musculo, biceps and brachialis, cutaneous, that cutaneous part. Now what about this thing here? We can see the elbow is bending and you think, oh, that is flexion of the elbow. That is what the brachialis does and it was is what the biceps does. It's both of them. So let's do this. Shing. Let's put that beside both, okay? Does that look all right? How about this one? What the what? That's another elbow flexion. And that's because both the biceps and the brachialis are going to are responsible for flexing the elbow. This is showing extension of the elbow, and that's not going to deal with these pictures, or this one, or this one, or this one. So there we go, my friends. That is showing now dorsal scapular nerve, long thoracic, suprascapular nerve, and musculocutaneous nerves are what's shown here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my pencil here. And now let's do this. I'm going to put all these together to make room because we still have three other ones to do. Let's go like this and put this pile together. And I'm going to take this pile and I'm going to put it over here. Okay. All right. I feel like I'm kind of doing a cooking show here. Do this, except I don't have food and it's um, not as tasty by the time I'm done. And I don't have any ovens. So other than that, it's just like a cooking program. All right. So let's put upper and lower subscapular nerves there. Let's put our axillary nerve there and let's put our radial nerve right there. Does that sound okay? And let's go do the same thing. Let's take a look at these three nerves and figure out which is which. Shing, shing, shing. So when I take this one, I always recognize that, that when you look at this posterior cord, this big one right there, that's the radial nerve. Let's set that right here, shall we? There's our radial nerve. And then I look at this one also coming off of that posterior cord. That's the axillary nerve. Let's put that one right there. And that means by default, but also there's two of them. There's the upper and lower subscapular and the one in the middle, thoracal dorsal, that does the lats. Um, sometimes called the middle subscapular, hence because you have upper and lower. 
Let's stick that one right over here, okay? And I added the S there and my writing's really sloppy. Okay, so there we've got it. So now let's go through our muscles. And here I've got the deltoid muscle. The deltoid is innervated by our axillary nerve. And let's take a look at this one. There's our teres minor, the teres major is here. No, that's actually subscapularis. I don't even have the teres major, it would have been right there. So in orange, there's our teres minor. That is also axillary nerve. And then we have this in, in green. We to the back of the right upper limb, and I know that because there's the spine of the scapula and there's the acromion. So there's the proximal part of the humerus and from the infraglenoid tubercle, and that's the long head, and the lateral head of the triceps is from the posterior shaft of the humerus. And the medial head is deep in there, and they insert on the olecranon process of the ulna. That, my friends, is the radial nerve. So here we have in blue, it's the front of the shoulder of the right side. And I know that because, look, there's our coracoid process. And there's the clavicle going to the acromion. And there is our lesser tubercle of the humerus. So all in blue is the subscapularis muscle. Shing! It's going to go right there. So now we take a look at all these different pictures. And I look at this and you think, all right, what action is that happening? So even though you see the forearm moving, the action is what's occurring really at the glenohumeral joint. This is showing internal rotation of that glenohumeral joint. And a number of muscles do that. But of the pictures we have here, the subscapularis is the principal one that will internally rotate. And then I take a look at this picture and I'm like, what is this? Someone just touching the lateral part of the shoulder. So this is also doing sensation. When you test the lateral part of the shoulder, that is the lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm, the upper division, and that is the axillary nerve, okay, that does that. And this picture here is showing um, the, the shoulder's already abducted. I should have turned the volume off, sorry, on my email. But they're showing abduction of that glenohumeral joint. And look at that. That's what the deltoid does. That's its big one. As soon as that initial 15 degrees is, is accomplished by supraspinatus, the deltoid's biomechanical advantage kicks in. And it does strong abduction of the glenohumeral joint. Um, here I've got one that shows the elbow straightening. So it goes from a bent to a straight position as shown by that arrow. That is extension of the elbow joint, which is the principal movement of the triceps, primarily done through the C7 level. And by default, here we have an external rotation of the glenohumeral joint, external rotation, and that is the teres minor. So external rotation by the axillary nerve is done by the teres minor, as well as the infraspinatus, which is innervated by the suprascapular nerve. And there, my friends, is the paper puzzle of the shoulder, elbow, muscles, and such.